19 Minuten bis zum Start. Fourth and last round of these World Championships will be started in 19 minutes. Gleich sprechen wir mit unserem Experten Philipp Steinmeister, was, was wir uns im zweiten Lauf noch freuen können, da war noch ein bisschen was zu tun. Der letzte Lauf steht an hier bei diesen BMW IDSF Bob und Skeleton Weltmeisterschaften 2024 in Winterberg. Presented by Felti. 20 Schnitte noch in Vierer Bob. Unten der Kollege Philipp Stallmeister. Das ist der Mann mit der Brille, mit der selbst Spielmann nichts anfangen konnte. Er schaut jetzt in die Kamera und freut sich, dass er bitte da sein kann. Philipp, ich denke, es ist klar, Platz 1, Platz 2 dürfen vergeben sein. Francesco Friedrich, Johannes Lochner. Aber ich habe vor dem Lauf, vor dem dritten Lauf vermutet, dass Adam Amur sich weiter absetzen kann von Zipolis. Aber der ist sogar eine Hundertstel rangekommen. Das ist, glaube ich, das Spannendste, was im zweiten Lauf auf uns wartet. Ja, auf jeden Fall. Hier die Freunde rechts von mir, die Letten, die freuen sich auch schon. Die drücken dem Zipolis die Daumen. Und das ist die spannende Frage im vierten Lauf, wer holt Bronze? Und um, ja, du hast Paul immer gefragt, wer sonst hier mit mir steht oder alleine nach einer Einschätzung. Jetzt frage ich dich, was meinst du, wer holt Bronze? Ich habe einen persönlichen Traum, das mögen die Organisatoren immer nicht so gerne. Ich hätte gerne einen geteilten dritten Platz. Ja? Amur und Tipolis auch gemeinsam dann auf den dritten Platz. Das wäre mir sehr, sehr recht. Da hätten wir alle nichts dagegen. A tight third place, Amur and Zipolis. Das wäre doch sehr, sehr schön. Das Francesco Friedrich im dritten Lauf. Es war nur eine Hundertstel, aber es war eben doch Bahnrekord gefahren ist bei diesen Witterungsbedingungen. Also mich persönlich hat es komplett überrascht. Ja, auf jeden Fall. Aber er ist einfach, ich sag mal, ein Perfektionist, der sich so vorbereitet und dann auch das passende Material für so ein Wetter dann parat hat. Und seine Fans hier oben auf Pirna angereist, auch mal gut. Die Kröten Kombo. Die Kröten Kombo mit den bunten Mützen, die bunten Sachsen. Wunderbare Kulisse. Also ich sag mal, du warst gerade hier unten, ich hab hier Gänsehaut, wenn ich jetzt sehe und bei der Stimmung. Wunderbar. Das ist tatsächlich, die Zuschauer machen das Ganze hier zu etwas völlig Außergewöhnlichem und das genießen wir natürlich alle, die wir hier arbeiten dürfen. Und das dürfen, sage ich, tatsächlich ganz bewusst. Man muss auch tatsächlich loben können, Markus Reichel aus Österreich, Fünfter, der wird sehr, sehr wahrscheinlich bei der großen Siegerehrung heute Abend mit dabei sein. Ja, Ekstase in Österreich und auch Brad Hall hat sich auf den sechsten Platz nach vorne gefahren. Also das wird dann schon auch zumindest eine auf den Plätzen bunt gemischte Siegerehrung. Das wird so sein und ich meine, die Abstände sind jetzt auch nicht ganz so groß. Ich sag mal, wenn man guckt, wie groß der Abstand zwischen Platz 1 und 2 ist, aber dann ähm, Platz 6. Ich meine, die Rittung haben wir die ganzen Tage erlebt, ein Fehler und es kann auch sein. Vielleicht fällt einer von 5 oder 6 noch auf Bronze. Wir werden es sehen. Vielen, vielen Dank, Philipp. Und für uns alle hier gilt eines. Vollgas für die letzten 20 Schlitten. Egal ob am Start, egal ob im Kreisel, egal ob hier unten im Ziel. Wir werden tröten, schreien, blöken. Einfach, damit die hier wirklich nochmal eine...
Welcome to the BMW IBSF World Championships here at Winterberg in Germany. This artificially iced track about to play host to the final action of two weekends. Winterberg first hosted the World Championships back in 1995. This year, seven events over the two weekends and the final action is the decider of the four-man bobsleigh competition headed by Francesco Friedrich. There's a huge amount of support for him. He increased the margin at the end of heat three to six tenths of a second. He's going to take an awful lot of stopping. And not only did he increase that margin over everybody else, but he also got a new track record into the bargain. So one run to go, but after heat three, up into the top three out of Amor. It was a really good run. And it made sure it's a German lockout at the top the three German teams vying over the medals, and Adam Amor determined to try to stay in that top three. Second, Hansi Lochner. He needed in heat three to try somehow to outpace Francesco Friedrich, but Friedrich had already gone, he'd already set the track record, and maybe that got into Lochner's head just a little bit because he lost time coming down the hill, and rather than matching or even going quicker, a 0.27 margin extended to 0.63, and there was frustration on his face. But it was a masterclass from Team Friedrich, straight out of the blocks with a demon start time and then a track record. The start time was 4.97, just a hundredth off the start record, and it continued from there. First bob down the hill and a track record set by Francesco Friedrich at 53.11. That's a hundredth better than an earlier track record he set yesterday. So this is how we look, with one run remaining. Francesco Friedrich ahead of Hansi Lochner and Adam Amor. They're arguing over the medals, but only 400s back is Emil Sipoulis, and then it's Marcus Reichel and Brad Hall, who was a silver medalist last year, trying to stay in that top six. Patrick Baumgartner, seventh. Simon Friedli is eighth. Ninth, Kaiji Sun ahead of Cedric Fonador. Then uh, Lee Chun-Jian, Taylor Austin and Frank Del Duca come ahead of Timo Rona. Jakob Mandelbauer dropped back in heat three, but he's still ahead of Matej Bahuanek. Then you've got Dave Vesely from Mattia Variola. Adam Baird, 19th, and Martin Krant, 20th. We lose Alexi Boron because only the top 20 qualify, and uh, Jakob's calendar withdrew after a crash yesterday. David Addison and Aaron Gulliver looking forward to the action. Can anybody stop Francesco Friedrich? It's a big ask. It's a big ask at this point, yeah. After that, that solid run in, in his third heat, he's really opened up a gap between himself and Lochner. But if anyone's going to do it, it's Hansi Lochner. Uh, he's got uh, a big, big starting crew behind him and a lot of talent himself. So he'll be looking at trying to close in on Friedrich. You see the athletes all warming up at the top of the hill. Warm day as well, because we've had an awful lot of sunshine to the point that some of the uh, blinds have had to come down on the track, haven't they, to stop the sun getting to the ice? Absolutely, yeah, and, and that's that's always the case. Um, you know, when the sun's out, 
you don't want the track to degrade too quickly. So they bring the blinds down, shade the track, keep it nice and cool, and that means that hopefully you get some nice equal racing throughout the course of the, the, course of the race. Now, for this final run, we go in reverse order. So we start with 20th fastest on aggregate, Martin Kratz, and we build up to Francesco Friedrich. So, uh, in theory, each sled that goes should go quicker than the one before, but not always like that. The push is absolutely key. Uh, corner zero is key, because if you tag the wall there, you're in strife. And a word about this track will come to as we watch this first run, but it sort of drops away after turn nine, and that's where the speed builds. It's 1.3 kilometers long, 15 curves uh, if you include corner zero. The start time is a 5.36 from Martin Krantz, and now let's follow him as he heads through turn one, turn two, the Omega curve, and then drops down the hill in this final run of the four-man bob in BMW IBSF World Championships this year. Yes, yeah, so that's the best start by Martin Krantz and his crew, so they'll be pleased with that. Uh, something to take away from this. Um, there is a, a big gap that's opened up between them and Adam Baird in front of them. So I think they know this runs more of a uh, more for experience um, and uh, yeah, just trying to get something smooth put together. It's a little bit of a skid, I thought, going up towards the prize also. Slightly unsettled from the Liechtenstein driver Martin Krantz in his first World Championship appearance in Four Man Bob, 21st uh, after heat one and two, 20th after heat three, and way up the wall there. Late flop down as he comes at 136.7 kilometers an hour over the line. Three minutes 40.03 is the aggregate time of all four runs. And we're not expecting him to topple the Francesco Friedrich, but that was a pretty decent run nonetheless. And the Liechtenstein team improving and getting experience all the time. Yeah, and that's the that's the key thing. Obviously, Liechtenstein's tiny nation. Um, so as you can imagine, their program's small. Um, their funding isn't as big as some of the powerhouses like Germany uh, and Austria and, and uh, Switzerland. So um, the fact that they're here, they're developing as a crew, uh, developing their kit. Um, and yeah, big, big flop off 13 into 14 there. We've seen a lot, a lot of people struggling with that corner. And in these big sleds, it's hard to pull that sled round and get it in the right line. You need to be really, uh, really clinical behind the D-rings. You say big sled, they're heavy things, these aren't they? They are indeed, yeah, 210 or 215 kilos. Um, and they might even weight them up as well. If your crew's light, uh, they might weight them up. We don't have a problem with that here because uh, Team Bad are a bit of a beastly crew. You got Adam on the front, who's the uh, gentleman there in the yellow helmet. And then behind him, uh, you've got Austin, Jens and uh, Callum Dixon on the back of the uh, parachute regiment soldier. Yeah, Jens Huller, uh, four-man world championship debut, 23rd in two-man last week with John Stanbury, Justin Millward's uh, first race, first world championship, therefore, as well. And Royal Marine, Adam Baird, the driver, leaps on board, and a good start as well, 5.29. They are quicker, therefore, uh, than the Liechtenstein team that went before. So Adam Baird, quicker than Martin Krantz, and now let's make sure that clock stays green in the graphic, because that means he's ahead of Krantz, and he's ahead by 1.3 seconds, that's good. Yeah, a bit late out of, uh, out of corner two there. However, they'll be pleased with that. They wanted to drop into the 20s on that start, and that's what they've managed to do. Um, small tap going into Kreisel, but he's got the best speed on Kranz, so um, it's putting together a decent run here. A little bit late out of Kreisel. Yeah, coming rounds good onto nine. Let's check his line out of nine. Shoots through there. Bit of a skid onto 11, but looking pretty good here from Adam. Well, championship debut for Adam Baird, and again, a little tap on the wall as he comes at 137 kilometers an hour through the deal curve up to the line and goes ahead of Krantz. 3.38.4 then, Adam Baird's time. So, whether that's going to be good enough to haul him a place up ahead of Matthew Variola, we'll have to wait and see. It was a good run by Adam Baird, but we know that Variola is an experienced and a quick driver as well, and he will go next for Italy. Definitely, yeah, and I think Variola's got the edge on the start. However, Adam will have been looking at that. I mean, he's, you know, 0.12, so 12 one hundredths of a second behind Variola, and that's definitely doable. You can make that up uh, with a good run. Um, you can see uh, just a little bit early off that corner, and it's pulled him back on. Uh, that's out of Kreisel. Um, and that's in that top section of the track that's quite flat, and we spoke about that quite a bit this weekend, so it's very important you make no mistakes up there, because it just kills your velocity. Um, but as he got down into the lower section, he looked, looked pretty good there by Adam. <laughs> Big <laughs> smile. Crew, I think he's pretty happy. And with uh, so many making a, a World Championship debut, again, it's experience, and uh, 
part of their result depends on this form here. Mattia Variola, who is crewed with Fabio Batti, Nicola Chalisato and Jose Delmas Obu. They are next to go. Their best start has been a 5.16. If they can do that again, that will gain them time over Adam Baird. And as they head to corner zero, it's a 5.13, wow, okay. an even better start. That's a great start. They'll be wondering where that was yesterday, because um, that would have, you know, probably put them up the field a little bit. And that, that's that's more the Variola um, crew that we're used to there. A big starting crew, Variola himself, incredible athlete. I think potentially we saw them run it a little bit longer on that start, hence why they've managed to drop, drop another couple of hundreds off. So, uh, good effort, boys. So, 37 hundreds up at the moment. And he was 12 hundreds up going into this run. So, we stretched the margin over Adam Baird, his crew. Big tap, tap into nine. Ball, yeah. yeah. Uh, not quite matching the velocity of Adam at the, at the moment. But he is still in front. Intermediate. Bit of a skip. Whoa, oh, he's gone. Coming out of the corner, over it goes. As long as all crew members are still in the bob, when it gets to the finish line, it'll count. It flops back onto the runners as well. So over the line, 338.83. But that means it's slower than Adam Baird. That crash did for them, and it keeps Adam Baird ahead then. He's the fastest of the three so far. But that crash was absolutely crucial for both Variola's problem and Adam Baird staying ahead. I was just about to say, he was uh, opening up a bit of a gap between himself yeah. and Adam there. And as I was about to say, he, yeah, he came off late on corner 13 and went up the wall there and it's just flipped the sled. I mean, the guys, they look all right. But you could see this run was just starting to fall apart as they come down into the bottom part of the track. We saw a few sleds do that earlier that managed to stay on all four runners, but unfortunately, it was just too much of Barry over there. And that's a big, big impact, especially for the guy on the back. The only consolation being that coming out of the zeal curve, it drops back onto the runners. But it's a scary ride, that, isn't it? Scary ride indeed. And yeah, it's all about keeping your shoulders off the ice because ice is cold. But if you're doing 130 kilometers an hour yeah. and your shoulder touches that, it'll burn. It'll burn straight through the clothes and straight through your skin as well. So there's a track hole just to make sure that the uh, crew is okay, that the track is okay, because of course now the ice will have been affected by a, a different part of the, the, the sled rather than just the runners. I say, yeah, you can, you can tear the track up, obviously, especially through those fast corners, you're doing a lot of speed. And uh, if you get part of the sled that touches the track, it will rip the ice off and uh, cause a bit of damage. So they'll get in there with a bit of slush. Uh, track work's been working incredibly hard this weekend with all the changes in temperatures and um, all the racing that we've had. There you go. Had <laughs> <laughs> a bad dwarf by some of the crew. Yeah, he's got some got some big brakemen yeah. behind him. Um, and it's a really exciting time for the for the GB program. You know, we've uh, we've got a lot of young, talented athletes coming into the program, and there's uh, lots of room for improvement. So the fact that they're here and competitive is is a really good start to to their careers. Now there's another potential star of the future here, Dave Vesseling, the Dutch lawyer won the IBSF Challenge Cup last weekend after the two-man competition as the best world championship debutant. He has been fifth in this year's four-man European Championship debut in four-man world championship action. Uh, and he's acquitted himself pretty well, 14, 16, 17. So he's dropped a little bit over the course of the weekend. But uh, again, competing at this level in four-man for the first time, it's been a big learning curve for somebody that only began in the sport back in 2022. Yeah. and. Um Dave, Dave's another driver that's, uh, he's been struggling a little bit. He struggled a bit earlier on this week in training down on that transition between 13 and 14. Um, so, you know, he'd have seen Variola go over there um, and I'm hoping not to do the same, but he's managed to keep three clean runs uh, on the way down. So, um, yeah, if he can manage four out of four, then um, definitely a good start. Definitely what he's, he's looking for. You don't necessarily think of Holland as a winter sports country, given that it's not got that many uh, snowy mountains, but a lot of them do <laughs> yeah. come across to Winterberg for winter sports. It's only about two and a half, three hours drive for the Dutch, so there's normally a big Dutch contingent here for uh, these events, and there has been this week as well. So, of course, that track hold means they've all had to go and try and keep warm as well as maintain focus, but now they are ready to go. In a moment, a little traffic light will go green to say that the track is open for them. They've got a minute in which they need to fulfill their start, and then it's all eyes on the clock. Their best start time has been a 5.13. 
yeah, they're a serious starting crew, this, these guys. Yeah. And I mean, you can see it. I mean, look at the size of them. Um, <laughs> you said they were animals earlier on. Absolute, the day, didn't you? absolute animals, honestly. And uh, I know that Dutch are famed for being tall, and they've got three or four big guys here, so they'll shift this sled like it's uh, a paperweight. Visor down, eyes forward. And Dave Vesselink, the driver, then with his crew gets ready for their final run in the BMW IBSF 2024 World Championships. A big push is required to beat a 5.13. That would be better than Variola. It would also be better than their best. And it is nice. 5.11, but then a clatter off the wall at corner zero. Yeah, so just out of the grooves there. Potentially it's running it too long just after that start time, a little bit too hard, and they've just had a big, big impact with corner zero, so really takes the velocity out of the sled. Uh, but there's a big gap open up between uh, himself and Adam Baird, so they do have a, a, a good cushion to work with. But really, these oh. guys are looking looking forward to um, Matej Bernek in front of them. But that gap is coming down a little bit. Only three tenths look as they come through the Chrysal. So three tenths up is Dave Vesselink, but is it going to grow? Is it going to plateau? It's going to come down a bit further to 29 hundredths. So okay. Vesselink looking a little bit ragged there. Yeah. He was, as we say, quickest off the start, second at intermediate one, and then third in the next two splits. It's down to just 15 hundredths. This could be and close. Absolutely. Adam Baird's going to be watching this, and he Whoa, does okay. by four hundredths go fastest. Close. Uh, the margin was coming down and down and down all the way uh, through the ramp, but in the end it was just enough by 400s to stay ahead of Adam Baird. Yeah, I think if that track had been another 100 metres longer, uh, yeah. Adam could still be in that leader's box, but uh, he's done enough there, Vesselink. Um, it was uh, a bit of a wild ride, I think, down there. He uh, <laughs> took, took some chunks out of the walls yeah. and some big taps. It started off with this one on the start. Uh, let's see if it shows what they, what they do out of the grooves here. Any kind of skid out of these grooves. There we go, look, sled veers off to the right, hits the wall, and then we'll hit this yeah. other wall. And then again on the right, so it's pitfalls, it. doesn't it? Look at that. Is there another tag on the right? Yeah, just glances off, and eventually it sort of points the sled in the right direction, but you've hemorrhage time by then. Hemor yeah, it all scrubs, scrubs time off. Um, but those boys, uh, they know they've got a bright future ahead of them, so um, we'll see what they can do in years to come. Absolutely so. Right, Matej Bohonek, uh, Mikhail Dobesh, David Buresh, Antonin Vyash, they are the next to go. Uh, 16th for the Czech Republic, and now they've got to try to beat a 3.38.36. Their best start time has been a 5.19 across the heats thus far, and a 5.21 isn't as good as they need it to be, because that is a tenth down on Veselink off the start alone. Yeah, and it's the, um, the first crew we've seen that hasn't pushed their fastest start in the last heat, so... Uh, potentially a bit of fatigue creeping in. It's very close on the clocks. Yeah, they're ahead, but only by 300. And that's the sort of margin that you could lose, uh, especially if the track degrades. Now, let's see. Now it's starting to grow. OK, Hunek's getting his head around this. Into the prizal. So 1,200s up. This to go top. Remember, this to be the fastest thus far. And it's still green on the graphic, which means he's still ahead now by two tenths of a second. Yeah, and there's good velocity there as well. Fastest sled so far uh, in terms of speed um, and time. So. Um, let's see what he can, if he can keep it clean. A bit of a flop off 13 there, but he's got the second best spear going into the final corner, and this should put him in the lead. It does. 337.99 then. So a good effort by Matej Mahoney. 337.99 is our new fastest time by 0.37. 3700 then he is ahead of uh, Dave Veselink. Adam Baird third, Mattia Variola is fourth, and Martin Krantz is fifth. That's the order of the five that have gone thus far. And everybody that gets to the finish gets this noisy reception from a really enthusiastic crowd. Yeah, and it's, it's a real, um, you know, mix of emotions, especially at the end of a major champ to get to the finish. Some some athletes will be feeling they could potentially have done more. Uh, some athletes will be really proud of their performance. Um, some will be relieved to have it over and done with. Yes. Because um, it is a tough few days, but yeah. A bit, uh, bit ragged down there. So we've seen a lot of sleds struggling there. You say it's a um, tough few days. Just w what happens for the next two or three days in terms of your body? How long does it take for any aches and pains to go away and to, to feel human again? It, dep it depends how rough the drive's been, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Fair point. Uh, Vesselink's crew might, might, take a, <laughs> might take a few more days than, than others, but um, it's, yeah, you're talking, you know, probably a good week to get over. Really, yeah. Four, four hard heats of racing, yeah, in terms of central nervous uh, system fatigue and things like that so well you've got Mandelbauer is the next to go Dominic Hanschitz uh, Daishan Nikos Barl and Adam 
Vina, who takes over from Lucas Zach for this one last run. So it's a new crew in a sense, and 5.29 off the start. Not brilliant, but they are still looking good to be ahead of Matej Bohonek by the end of the run. How much of a handicap is it going to be having a, a, a different brake man on board for the last round? Or if it's a well-oiled team, should that not be an issue? Well, this is the thing. So with your, uh, we call them a spare athlete in bobsleigh. With your spare athlete, you want to rotate them into the team so that when, if, if this happens, you've got uh, you've got four guys that are used to racing together. However, that start time was slightly down, so probably seeing um, seeing the uh, effects of losing Lucas off the yeah. back there. Um, but there's a big gap between themselves and a bayonet behind them. So, oh, oh, there it goes. Gone. Big crash coming out of the labyrinth. And up to the line. Again, it flops back onto the runners. But 3.38, 3.8 is not going to be a good enough time to move up the order. That's going to put them third. So Mandelbauer, our second crash of this final run. Yeah, so they've actually lost two spaces there. And it's same for Mandelbauer. I mean, they were just 100th behind Timo Rona in front of them. So he'd have been starting that run thinking potentially he could have gained a spot and he's ended up losing two. Um, but it, it, you know, it's what happens that a lot of these pilots, they get told to let the sled fly when you get to the bottom. The, the, the less steering you do, in theory, the sled should go faster because you're not turning those front runners and, and causing friction on the ice. But we see him come off late again, off 13, and that the back of the sled just drags the rest of it over. And another big chip taken out of that right wall down there on 13, 14 transition. Yeah, you can tell it's heat four and all the pressure's on, can't you? Again, it comes back onto the runners, another impact for the crew to take. So there'll be a track hole just to make sure that uh, the wall's OK and the surface is OK. There's confirmation track hold from the uh, officials. And then we will be swiftly back underway. The next to go uh, should be Timo Rona for the Rona Bulls Bob team, who was 12th in the World Championships last year, 16th back in 2020. He's had a Europe Cup win this year at San Moritz and three other thirds. So Rona is, uh, again, a good, experienced driver, but 13th, 15th, 14th, he's hovered uh, in that final uh, sort of quarter of the uh, classification, if you like, over the course of the weekend. Yeah, we've seen him We've seen him pick up some good results uh, in the Europa Cup, like, like you mentioned. Uh, but that step up onto this World Cup level, if you like, or World Champs in this case, um, it is a big step. Um, but as a young driver with a young crew behind him, he'll be, uh, yeah, looking to looking to make that step in the future. Uh, he's actually got his opportunity because um, yeah, Michelle Vogt and team have, have pulled out because of a nasty crash in Altenburg. So uh, it's allowed Timo Rona to come into this championship as the uh, third Swiss sled and um, and yeah, show, show us what he can do. So they've been sheltering at the uh, start in the officials hut there to try and keep warm, still got the thick jackets on, uh, and as we were discussing yesterday, once you take those coats off, suddenly you become very cold indeed, so keep those on for as long as possible, they're focusing on the run, the sled will be put into the uh, grooves in a few moments, once the indication from the officials at the top of the track is given that uh, they're ready to go, and then concentration absolutely paramount will be sort of going through that start process in their minds, won't they? What they have to do and how they have to do it. Yeah, so each each athlete will have their own routines. Um, you'll see some guys on the start line that love to shout and scream and fire themselves up that way. Other guys will stay quiet and focused. Um, for a lot of the pilots, it's all about uh, not being overstimulated because, of course, you know, you need that big push at the start, but then they've got to get in, keep it calm and, and find the lines down the track. The brakeman, on the other hand, you can see, uh, see them slapping themselves there to get themselves hyped up. Um, for them, it's all about the push, getting in smoothly and getting down. Um, and, you know, we see the very best do that in under five seconds, covering, you know, that's 45 metres in under five seconds, pushing a 210 kilo kilogram object. It's, uh, yeah, just goes to show what these, these big men are capable yeah. of. And it's no wonder you talk about fatigue because it's four runs, pressure runs as well, and they've had... Uh, three days of training, so what, six runs over the, the, the course of training as well. So, yeah, inevitably it's going to take it out of them. And some were here doing two-man last week as well. Yeah, they were. Um, it's, it's a lot on the pilots, you know. Uh, the pilot and the top brakeman will, will race two-man, and then they'll come into four-man, and, and it all starts again for them. So let's see what Timo 
can do off the start. The time to beat is now 3.37.99. Their start time they're aiming to beat, 5.19, which would be an improvement for their weekend. And it's a 5.20, rides up the ice on the outside of corner zero, but didn't, I don't think, really lose too much out of all of that because it wasn't bumping from side to side. No, it shot him straight out of corner zero and he managed to stay away from the walls. Um, and it's a uh, yeah, good start time, puts them around you know, where they've been starting all competition, so they'll be happy with that. Small tap uh, coming into five there, but it's looking good at this top uh, part yeah. of the track. They're managing to extend that lead. Third best start time, second at intermediate one, second at the second split. It's staying green on the graphic, little tap off the wall there, and a little bit high maybe going into that next left, but still ahead. Second best intermediate three time, speed building from this point on. This is where we've seen the dramas in previous runs. This looks okay so far out of the labyrinth. This should put Timo Rona as the fastest over the line. He is indeed fastest, 337.76. Nicely done. Yeah, it goes ahead of Benoek, uh, Benoek there. It's. Uh... Yeah, good run by uh, good run by Timo. <laughs> the cowbells okay. are ringing, and this is the good thing. Even if you're a German fan, as those in the yellow jackets are, they respond to everybody coming over the line because they appreciate the fans here. Exactly what's just happened in those last 55 seconds or so. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you know, you've got to respect these athletes. I mean, they're competing at the highest level in this sport, and, and it's not an easy sport. It's um, you know, we, we talk about all the effort that they put in on the push, um, but even going down the track itself, you know, you can be pulling anywhere between sort of four and seven Gs going around some of these corners at those speeds. Um, and that takes it out of you as well. So they will go to the winner's box then, or the leader's box, I should say, because Timo Horona now 2300s ahead, but he may not stay there for very long because another... Uh, Absolute weapon is about to go down the Vinterberg track, namely the crew of Frank Del Duca, Adrian Adams, Matteo Mitchell, and Hakim Abdul Sabur. There are some big guys here, and soldier Frank Del Duca is the driver. Fifth in two man last week, four man's been a different proposition this weekend for them. Start time to beat 5.13, 5.18 is the chunk slower than they would like it to be. So let's see how the rest of this run pans out for them. They're ahead at the moment, though, even with only the third best start time. Yeah, Frankie's uh, he struggled with consistency this weekend. Um, his first and third heats not being great drives. His second heat was a brilliant drive. Um, so let's see, let's see what he can do here. Um, he's got some experienced guys on the back of the sled. Manio Mitchell is actually an Olympic medalist in the Summer Games. It was in London 2012 Olympics took a bronze medal. So lots of talent. Now that gap, look, they are ahead, but it's coming down. It was a 10, it it's is. 800, so this is a bit marginal for Del Duca versus Rona. If the clock goes red, it means they're in strife. At the moment, they've managed to claw it back. 1,200s ahead and at 137.2 kilometers an hour to the line to go quickest is Frank Del Duca. He was able to respond and sort it out and actually stretch the margin once again. That was a good recovery. Yeah, yeah, so from saw a few, a few small mistakes compared to uh, Timo Rona at the top of the track there, just so he bled a bit of time, but like you say, he stemmed the bleed. And then down at the bottom, he kept it nice and smooth, let that sled fly. And the weight of those big guys in the back um, <laughs> has, has helped them reach a really good top speed there. And yeah, they, they go in front. You see all the energy put into that start. It wasn't a mega start, but enough to uh, very definitely put them in the mix. Yeah, I think they've now. been struggling slightly with their uh, choreography, if you like, so to speak, um, and loading into the sled. Um, but sometimes, you know, if, if a crew hasn't raced together for a while, uh, it does, it does, um, you know, just take a while to get back. I know uh, that they've changed their crew quite a few times this season, so maybe we're just seeing the effects of that. Now, there's a good North American battle, in a sense, between USA and Canada. Uh, Taylor Austin, Devon McEwen, Anthony Couturier and Shaq Murray Lawrence. Next to go, then, uh, they were before this uh, 1200s up on Frank Del Duca. So let's see what Taylor Austin can do now. 5.27 uh, to corner zero is only the sixth best start time. That is not the start they needed. No, so these are, it's one of our slowest starting crews uh, on the track. However, Taylor has got a lot of experience uh, himself. And he's been managing to put some good drives together, some consistent drives. Um, and he went really well in heat two yesterday, coming down actually seven quickest. The times are getting really close yeah, now, just, just two one hundred ahead. 
So Taylor Austin has got to do a Del Duca, if you like, and drive the second half of this run really well. And he is doing, look, because he's now stretched in again to 900. So stem that bleed. And what can he do through the labyrinth? It's all looking good. It's looking tidy. It's looking quick. Margin stretched again. Another 200's found. 137.7 kilometers per hour. Over the line to go fastest. 337.49. Good recovery. Yeah, managed to find managed to find some good speed at the bottom of the track there. Uh, best speed of all, overall so far. And a big pump of the fist there by Taylor because he'll be really pleased that he's managed to stay in, in front of Frank Del Duca because that's a, a big scout to take. And there's national pride as well with Canada uh, being ahead of USA. So uh, a good effort then by Team Canada. The uh, Canadians, Taylor Austin, the driver, and they're in replay. Maybe a touch of a skid going towards the right hander but a little brush off the wall nothing significant no major time losses so uh, good to see they were 16th after heat one and then 12th after heat two and stayed there after heat three so let's see whether uh, 12th is where they're going to end up but the point being progress made yeah i can see some canadian flags there in the stands <laughs> um some fans that have maybe made the trip out to, to come and watch them yeah so now for china uh, the next Crew to go is Li Chunxian, Wei Peng, Zhu Zhi Long, and Zhen Heng for Li Chunxian, 14th last year, a second four man world championship appearance. And this is a crew that's yo yoed a bit 12th after heat one, up to 10th, and then down to 11th. So let's see whether the top 10 beckons again. If it does, it's going to be an absolutely storming run. 5.19, their best start time, and that was done in heat one. The push comes now, then. Final run of the weekend. Everybody on board, and the start time is 5.19, matching their own best. Yeah, so they'll be pleased with that. It looks like they uh, ran it nice and long again, just like they did in the previous heat. Um, and one thing I've noticed about this crew um, is that they've been very consistent throughout the heat. Um, so if he can put four good runs together, it's something to take away from this championships and be proud of. But fourth best start, fourth at intermediate one, and only fourth as intermediate two, so... Seen that velocity come down, ninth best speed coming into the Chrysal. Still ahead by 1600s. We've seen others get a little bit marginal and then be able to extend that gap again towards the end where they're really able to drive, where the speed quickens. So now 1500s to the good. So for uh, Li Chun-Jan, he should go to the top of the times and does so on a 337-33. <laughs> yeah, just did enough there to, to stay in front. Um, and when he needed to keep it clean, he did. So he's done enough there, Lee. And yeah. There's also the battle between the top Chinese crew, isn't there? Because uh, after Cedric Follador, there will be the other Chinese driver, Sun Kai Ji. And there's pride at stake, bragging rights at stake to be the best finisher for your nation. So there you can see the start. And was there a bit of hesitation for number three to leap on board? Xu Jiang. Sorry, Xu. Xi Lung did get on board eventually, but it looked as though it was a little hesitant so to do. But the time, OK, 337.33. And there you can see with the bodywork flexing the sled. Yeah, they're in that the labyrinth. new BTC sled um, testing that out. Uh, whereas the other Chinese team are in a Volna, so they have different kit. Um, and I suppose it's good. It's good to have varying kit across the programme. You then you learn what's fast and what's not, and you can invest your money in the right places. Away now goes Cedric Follador with Omar Vergler, Dominic Hushmit, and Gregory Jones, the former pole vaulter. And what's their start going to be like? Well, they use the wall on the outside of corner zero. They're ahead already, and a 5.17. It's not their best start, but it's certainly not their worst. So now, Cedric Follador in his third World Championship appearance, his best being a ninth, heads down the hill and is already two tenths quicker than Li Chun Jian. Yeah, he was only eight one hundredths behind um, Kai Ji Sun, so he'll be looking forward, trying to catch him. Um, and in order to do that, he needs to keep an eye and clean it from this top section, which we're seeing he's got the fifth best velocity. Maybe a little late into nine, the sled was a bit, of a bit whippy onto there, but looking good out of nine, onto 11 now. And down into the lower labyrinth where the speed really starts to pick up. Let's see what he can do. 137.6 kilometers an hour and will go fastest. Over the line goes Follador. 337.12. He's ahead by 0.21 of a second. Nicely done, that. Cedric Follador, no fuss, no drama. May not be the quickest that we end up with, 
but it is unlikely to be the quickest we end up with, but a good, solid performance, that. Yeah, it's one of the uh, one of the things you see often from the from the Swiss is um, they don't necessarily have the best starts in the field, and I'm sure you know they'd, they'd happily admit that. But the quality behind the D rings, and uh, they you know they manage to find speed down the track, yeah, yeah. and so you'll see times might be red at the top, but by the time they've got to the bottom, they're hitting the, some of the highest velocities going, and they're finding the time. The super slow mo shots, fantastic. You can see what has to happen uh, it's not just a case of leaping on board there's the push handles to get in visors might have to come down as well and make sure that you're in the right place and the balance is right so that you don't force the sled to veer left or right heading into corner zero and all of that within the first what five seconds yeah yeah it all happens so fast believe yeah. me <laughs> sun kaiji ding song yi jai long and ding yunda are the next to go for china ninth after heat three and their best start time thus far, a 5.17 set back in heat one. Are they going to be able to get ahead of Follador? Seemingly so, 700s quicker already. Yeah, 5.18 there by the boys. They are very consistent across all four heats. Um, so that means that, you know, they've got their conditioning right coming into this championship, not falling foul of any uh, fatigue. You see the time stay the same, 0 0.08 in front. And that's the advantage they had coming into this heat. Still ahead, but only by a tenth. 11 hundredths, then, is that margin. So, again, just as we've seen in others, in that first half of the track, gap's a little bit marginal, and you think maybe they're losing time. Touch off the wall there that fires them a little bit wide there, like up through turn nine, but to 11 now. It is still looking good, this, for Sun Kaiji. Finding time. Yeah. Bit of a tap there, a bit late off 13. But he's going to be fastest, isn't he? Up towards the line. Yep, that's good enough. 3.37.02, quicker by a tenth. Yeah, comes back back down to a tenth, but manages to uh, hold off Cedric Polidor and crew. <laughs> They're delighted, look at that. Absolutely. Standing up, standing proud, absolutely so, deservedly so. Uh, Ding Song was the first one to stand up and then congratulate Sun Kaiji once the sled comes to an end. The track workers are there to stop it from going backwards. They're delighted with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's a great result. They're um, just outside... Oh, they're firmly in the top ten. Yeah. yeah so. And Sun Kaiji's only other appearance in 2019, he was 20th. So it's a massive personal improvement. Definitely. And that just goes to show, you know, how much work these guys are putting in. Obviously, last Olympics was held in Beijing. They've got a brand new track there, so they can train there now, uh, learn how to drive, test all their kit there. And I think we're starting to see that pay off with, um, you know, a big jump in results. Now, here's a man that's been third in the World Championships in the past, quite a long time ago now, back in 2016. It is Simon Friedli, and he has got Dominic Schleitfer, Luca Rowley, and Andreas Haas ready to push. Haas was 10th in two-man last week. Luca Rowley was 11th in two-man last week. Uh, Simon Friedli, then, is another very experienced driver. As I say, his uh, best has been that third. This is his eighth World Championship appearance, and he needs to try and be in the top six by the end. 5.10, the start time, and that's not his best of the weekend, but he's certainly in the mix. Yeah, so a good start time in, in comparison to the uh, to the teams behind him, and that'll set him uh, in good stead going down the track. He's got a good advantage now, so he's nearly three tenths out in front, and it's all about building on that because you know um, he'll be he'll be looking to make up time on Patrick Baumgartner in front of him, um, and he's yeah keeping that lead, so he's doing a good job. Indeed, he's fastest off the start and fastest in all of the splits so far. So looking very promising indeed, this for Simon Friedli. All of that experience being channeled as the driver to bring this sled down the run as quickly as possible. A little bit scrappy maybe out of the low labyrinth. 137.2 kilometres an hour, fastest time, 3.36.68. That puts him top by 0.34 of a second. Yeah, and he just opens that gap um, between himself and uh, Sun Kai Zhi behind him. Um, so he's had a good, a good last heat, Simon Friedley. And I think, you know, with, of course, I've mentioned it before, with uh, Michelle Vogt missing out on this World Champs, there's been, you know, a little bit of disruption amongst the other crews in terms of brakemen and things like that. So uh, perhaps these, these guys haven't, haven't raced together too many times this sure. season. However, good starts all round. Um, and, yeah, they, they managed to yeah. dip into the O's on the second and third heat, which is... Good going. And Swiss sliding as an entity could do with some good news, couldn't it? And a feel-good story. And a you know, good result here would, would boost 
team morale. Yeah, certainly. And uh, it's, it's, it's good. I mean, Vicky Vogues himself, absolutely world class. Um, you know, brilliant results in the four man and the two man this season. Unfortunately, had to miss out. But of course, you know, Friedley, Friedley himself has, has been right up there, right in the mix. So, um, yeah, good to see. Patrick Baumgartner, along with Eric Fantazzini, Robert Mercier and Lorenzo Bilotti, set off then to try to get ahead of Simon Friedley to go fastest. They need a 54.55. Their start is a good one, a 5.11, and that's their best of the weekend. This is all going in the right direction. We were a little bit concerned after the last run that maybe they'd lost a little bit of time, but Baumgartner here totally focused, and this is looking good. Fastest so far by 0.47. Yeah, so Baumgartner after the last heat was really in the mix, uh, sort of vying for that top six. Um, he's dropped off a little bit, but, you know, they've started really well. And he's already half a second out in front of, uh, of Friedley behind him. And his speed is great. Uh, second best velocity now coming down into corner nine. Great onto corner nine. No tap before there. Shoots through to corner 11 perfectly. Um, and these lines are all looking really good. Half a second to be good, that's now 0.54. 137.5 kilometers an hour, Baumgartner will become the target. 3.36.16, the fastest so far. And Brad Hall next to go will have seen that, and the Brits will all realize that they have got a job on their hands because uh, there wasn't much to choose between Baumgartner and Brad Hall. It was 41 hundredths of a second, but that was a very, very good drive by Patrick Baumgartner. Yeah. Yeah, very, very good drive, very quick time, and uh, he's had a fantastic season, Patrick. So, um, great way to top it off. Uh, he's up in the top seven, and so no worse than seventh, which is um, a good result. But of course, he'll be waiting on tender hooks now to see how the Brits can do in front of him, sure. see if he can pick up another spot. That's a great load, by the way, boys. Uh, in and down, all together. You can see the brakeman tucked away behind the driver. While you're waiting for your run at the, the top of the track, are you watching and discussing what the, the team that goes before are doing? Are you saying, well, look at that, or they're good there, or they've made a mistake, or are you totally focused on what you're doing? Yeah, so we'll we'll know who started the best, and that's right. what we'll be after. Okay. Um, but we don't tend to watch the runs. It's all sure. about staying focused. Okay. Well, focus is what Brad Hall, Leon Greenwood, Taylor Lawrence, and Greg Cackett are now doing. This, their final run silver medalist last year and brad hall the driver leaps on board is it a good start it is a 5.08 and that is the best start time of this final run so far so brad hall comes downhill he's got patrick baumgartner's time to aim for 336.16 and he's ahead at the moment by 0.43 of a second yeah he's got a big gap there and the boys have been really consistent starting this competition um, and of course we've got marcus striker like you say just just five one hundredths in front of him so brad needs to put a clean run together here a uh, little bit skilly going into prizal um, and we know brad can drive this track really well uh, the last five times he's been here he's taken four silver medals from this track so it's one of his favorite tracks and best performing tracks um, and it's all looking good, looking good out of nine. Now into the lower labyrinth. Four tenths up, still quick, maybe a bit of a skid there, but at 138 kilometers an hour, Brad Hall crosses the line. He was way up the wall, but he got away with it. 335.7, that's the fastest. 335.70, delight from the Brits down in the finish area. I just thought as he came out of the Zeal curve, it was a little bit high up the wall, but fastest nonetheless for now at least that was a good drive by brad hall yeah yeah by then he, he found all the speed he could out of that sled <laughs> i think and just let it fly like i say the uh if you, the less you control it the faster it's going to go um and i think that's what we were seeing down at the bottom he uh he really let that thing go and brad always has such a great ability to find speed down the track and with an engine behind him of this caliber leon greenwood Taylor Lawrence, Greg Cackett, these boys are true professionals through and through. Lots of experience in between them. Obviously, Leon making his debut, uh, the soon-to-be father. Uh, so... Hey, the British Bobs today, our sponsors, everyone here at Winterberg. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Good it's job, Brad. Crew. <laughs> so, Brad Hall is 0.46 ahead of Patrick Baumgartner, Simon Friedley third. Uh, and let's now see what Marcus Treichel can do. The former Luge competitor, uh, then fifth going into this final run, seventh last year, sixth appearance in BMW IBSF World Championships. Visor down, and now he's focused. 
First target, try and beat that 5.08, the best start time so far of Brad Hall. And if he can, we'll get an idea as to the quality of the run ahead. They're all on board, it looks okay at corner zero, runs a little bit wide and that does move the sled across. A tag on the other side and a 5.05 is a really good start time. Yeah, really good. They've matched their start time in the third heat. They've brought those start times down from the day before. Uh, and this is a really good starting through and they've, they've opened that gap up to a tenth uh, in front of Brad. Um, this will be a great result for Marcus if he can keep in head of Brad Hall. That's a huge scout to take. He's only got the fourth fastest speed going into the Chrysal. Um, I think this is going to be a close run thing by the time we get down to the bottom of the track. Let's have a look then. 1200s. So it's sort of plateau for him. He's not losing, that's for sure. So. Marcus Treichel still looking good, still going to outpace Brad Hall, a little bit wide there, but he's gone away with it, but only 900 up, that's as he down. comes at 137 kilometres an hour, it's good enough, 335.68, our new fastest time, but only by 200 of a second, so time did bleed away at the end. Yeah, 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 I mean, he just managed to, to get Brad there. Um, and, I mean, he'll be really happy with that, I'm sure, because Brad, you know, last year, silver medalist, um, so it's a huge scout to take. Yeah, you can see a huge grin on, on Marcus's <laughs> face. Um, and, you know, I, with those start times, it's, it's like you say, it's a starter's track. Yeah. You can throw the sled down the track well, and they loaded well. Um, you know, you're going to get that advantage. Let's have another look at that start. You see all that energy, all that effort being put into pushing the four-man sled. And once they're in, once they're up to speed, just keeping it smooth, keeping it neat and tidy and fast. And that is exactly what Marcus Treichel did. And they're really happy about that, and understandably so. <laughs> yeah, I've seen lots of Austrian flags around the uh, round uh, today. And uh, yeah, lots of support for them, so. Well, there's always Latvian support, and the joint silver medalist last year, Emil Sipulis, is next to go, tied with Brad Hall. Uh, in his only World Championship appearance, so not a bad strike rate for him. Uh, he was a joint World Cup winner at Altenburg, don't forget, a couple of weekends ago. Uh, and coming into this final run, four for the start time, load five there. zero one. He's a good one, but as you say, trouble with the load. Yeah, yeah, so great, great time. Um, but it just seemed like three was... Uh, sorry, the number two brakeman was uh, held up for a little bit while three snuggled in behind him, but they're, they're all down now and they're two and a half tenths to the good, so... Uh, it doesn't look like there's any disruption in the back as they're going down this portion of the track. No, fastest off the start and an intermediate one and intermediate two. So let's have another look at the next timing point and see if that margin has stretched out because as they come down the hill now, 0.23. So they're still ahead, even if it's not a massive margin. Sipoulis is just going to drive as best he possibly can now. Speed building through the lower labyrinth, heading up towards the line. Not the best speed, though, but it's going to be a good time. 35.68 to beat, and he does so by two tenths of a second. 3.35.46. Yes, yeah, Emil goes in front, and uh, great result for him. No worse than fourth at this championship, but of course, he'll be looking forward. Uh, Adam Amor was only four one hundredths in front of him, um, and one of the major talking points of that run was the start. 5.01. Um, even if there might have been some issues on the load, we'll have a look at the replay in a second, but um, he, you know, that's a that's a massive start by the boys. Anything anything towards the low fives is, is brilliant. Uh, you're right in terms of he can't be lower than fourth, but even that will be a disappointment after Silver jointly last year. So it illustrates that, that Sipoulis did lose out yesterday. That, that second run just wasn't the best, and it, it's gone against him for the, the rest of the weekend. So, yeah, fourth, no disgrace, but not as good as last year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They look disappointed, but it's always hard to tell with the Latvians because uh, <laughs> they can have a frown on their, on their face but be, you know, the happiest man in the world. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the brothers Amor, Adam and Issam, along with Benedict Herkel and Rupert Schenk, are going to be next to go, third. And they were only 400 ahead of Emil Sapoulis. Their best start time is a 5.04. And the two-man European champions, Adam and Issam Amor, at one and two, are on board, and now let's see what the start is going to be. It's a 5.02. Wow, They're ahead okay. of aggregate, but they've lost a hundredth against Sipulis. This is going to be tight. Yeah, so they've, they've, uh, they've started really well there um, for them, and that's the fastest start of the competition. And they're only five one hundredths in front of Sipulis at the moment, so this could be a close run thing. Uh, a little bit late, I'd say, um, off there, coming into five. Uh, but looking good through here, that gap is opening up. Yeah. Um, velocity slightly quicker than Sapoulis as well, coming into the Chrysal. 
And uh, now we're talking about medal places, aren't we? Because there's this and two more sleds to go. So wherever Amor finishes, if he's ahead of Sipoulis, he's on for a medal, he's on for bronze at worst. And he's still quicker than Emil Sipoulis. Let's see what the gap is now. 1,300 down towards the last curve. 137 kilometers an hour up to the line and fastest on a 3.35.31 goes Adam Amor. That was a good drive. There we go, yeah, those Blair boys are super happy, punching the air. Here we go, we'll hear big roars from the crowd for Amor. Uh, it's such a great young talent and his brother Isam is so proud of him um, and he you know, he makes that known. Look, here we go, brothers embrace there on the line. That's nice to see, but it's the bronze medal, uh, at least, yeah, at, at least. least. So. Um, you know that's gonna that's gonna mean a lot to them in terms of funding and and uh, all sorts uh, sponsorship, you know, and all that going forward. It's, it's there's big implications for these guys. So great load, yeah. These German this German trio of sleds have, have really put on a masterclass here and yeah, you know, showed us how to start and load. Well. Yesterday in the two-woman competition, it was a German lockout of the medals. The top three were all German crews, and it looks like it's going to be happening. It will be happening again now, but the order is yet to be confirmed. So no worse than third, Adam Amor, but we've got Hansi Lochner and Francesco Friedrich still to go. And here is Hansi Lochner, along with Florian Bauer, Eric Bruckert and Georg Flaschauer, and they are 63 hundreds back. This is going to be very tough indeed to overcome that margin against Friedrich, but the other part of this is they've got to try and stay ahead of Amor now. Let's see what they can do. They're ahead so far, 5.03 off the start. Good start time. Good start time, yeah. It looked like they ran it long there. Um, so it's a little bit ragged getting in. However, uh, zero 03, very, very good start time. And ahead by 0.47 of a second, yeah. So, in a way, Lochner is a little bit in no man's land. He's unlikely to catch Friedrich with six tenths of a second, but he should be quicker than Amor, so Silver beckons for him. Four tenths up now on Adam Amor through the Chrysler. Yeah, barring any um, huge errors, uh, like you say, I think the Silver medal might be nailed on. However, look, we're looking at the speeds here, and he's only 14th on the speeds uh, with the velocities. Um, so probably seeing a little bit of track degradation later in this late stages of the day, and that time is coming down. So a more will gain time on Lochner, but it's not it's not going to be enough. Fastest on a 3:34.98, 3:34.98. That's going to be silver at worst for Hansi Lochner. So he'll be content with that. But this morning's run just wasn't good enough. And had he been better in heat three, he might be a real fight uh, for the outright win here. But. We, we saw him get out of the sled after heat three a couple of hours ago with a disappointed expression on his face, and he knew then it was going to be tough work this afternoon. Yeah, I think so. And sometimes, you know, you can feel like you've done everything right and the speed just isn't there and, and you don't know why. Um, but that's to go away and look at later on, on videos and speak with the coaches. But, um, yeah, I think this potentially, it could have been won or lost on the third heat. But, of course, as we've seen, anything can happen. Um, and although uh, Francesco Friedrich is quite far in front at the moment and he's the last sled to go, um, he still needs to do the business. So, track record set in Heat 1. He blitzed that again in Heat 3. Uh, five times the world champion is Francesco Friedrich. Fastest in Heat 1 and 2 and 3. He has been the dominant man this weekend, having won the two-man world championship last week. Let's see whether this masterclass continues. The final sled in the 2024 BMW IBSF World Championships, 4.99 as the start time. Wow, how about that? Under five seconds, that is a huge start. That is a huge, huge start. I honestly thought he could get the start record there, not quite. But seriously, anything under five is just fantastic. Look at this, seven tenths up, and he's only done the first intermediate. You can feel the disappointment from all the other athletes there. He's a little bit wide up the wall there, but he's going to be able to recover at the Chrysler. Yet again, Francesco Friedrich is just so, so good. Nobody has an answer to him. Eight tenths up now. Yeah, he's really pulling away, and, you know, the velocity's high. This kit runs well. He knows his track really well. And he's going he's gonna to reach a really high top speed here, almost topping out at, uh, yeah, 137.2. World Championship goal for Francesco Friedrich. He's done it again. That is his sixth World Championship in four-man. What a week he's had at Winterberg. Joined with Torsten Margis, Alexander Schuller and Felix Straub. They are World Champions for 2024. Francesco Friedrich first won it in 2017, again in 19, in 20, 21 and 23, and now 2024. 
the numbers, the achievements, they just keep on going for a man that started his four-man career in 2012, his 100th race at this, if you like, tier one level, and it results in a world championship. He's got eight of them in two-man, six of them now in four-man. He's yeah. a machine. Undisputed, greatest of all time. You've got Felix Straub there to the right of your picture, and that's his first world champs medal. Yeah. And it's a gold. <laughs> It's not a bad strike rate, is it? No. What a weekend, what a performance. Two track records, bettering his uh, first one from Saturday earlier on today, and a gold medal, the net result, and by the margin of 0.88 of a second. Yeah, Just dominant. breathtaking. Dominant, absolutely dominant. And uh, yeah, we're witnessing, we're in the era of the greatest of all time in Francesco Friedrich. Let's look at the results. Francesco Friedrich wins BMW IBSF World Championships 2024 for four-man bobsleigh from Hansi Lochner and Adam Amor, a good third from Emil Sipoulis, who was silver medalist last year, uh, jointly with Brad Hall, who is sixth this year, Marcus Treichel sandwiched between them. Seventh, Patrick Baumgartner, Simon Friedli, eighth ahead of Sun Kai Ji, and the top ten competed by Cedric Forador, ahead of Lee Chun Jan, then Taylor Austin, clear of Frank Del Duca and Timo Rona. Matej Bohonek, 15th, Dave Vesseling next from Jakob Mandelbauer and Adam Baird in 18th, 19th, Matthew Variola, Martin Krantz in 20th. So fantastic stuff from Francesco Friedrich and his break men, Florian Bauer, uh, along. Alex Schiller. Uh, so yeah, Alex Schiller, uh, rather. Yep. Yeah, good effort all weekend from them. And perfect team, perfect choreography. Not a, a, a runner, a blade out of line all the way down the hill. And so the three great mentors, the Margit, Alexander Schiller, Felix Straub, all coming good. And also don't forget for uh, Alexander Schuller, that's his second gold here at Winterberg because he was the break man in two man with uh, Francesco Friedrich just a week ago. So uh, much to celebrate and so much support for Team Francesco Friedrich and the crowd have got what they came for. Yeah, they might need to be uh, doing some DIY extending the <laughs> metal cabinets, yeah, I think, because um, there'll be some more silverware going in there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, big starting crew. We say it's a starters track, and I think that is what's made the difference here. They've been the fastest consistently across all heats off the start, and Friedrich has just been clinical down the track. It has been another weekend of drama, of action, and of track records here at Winterberg. It has been a dramatic uh, BMW IBSF World Championships for 2024. We've had some great drama, some spectacular crashes, and our new world champion driver, Francesco Friedrich, has done it again from Aaron Gulliver and David Addison. Goodbye. Es ist ganz leise, damit die Interviews weitergeführt werden können. Wir haben jetzt dann noch die kurze Winners Presentation und um 19 Uhr haben wir alle einen Termin auf dem Marktplatz in Winterberg.
BMW IBSF Bob und Skeleton Weltmeisterschaften 2024 presented by Feltins. Die Winners Presentation Vierer Bob der Männer. Der dritte Platz. The third place. Aus Deutschland. Representing Germany. Adam Amour. Isam Amour. Bitte dich hoffen. Und Rupert Schein. Überreicht Heinrich Böckelö, der Regierungspräsident. Oh, Vorsicht. Zweiter Platz, Gewinner der Silbermedaille aus Deutschland, representing Germany, Johannes Lochner, Florian Bauer, Erik Bruckert und Georg Fleischhauer. Applaus für die Silbermedaillengewinner! Der erste Platz. Weltmeister 2024. First place. World Champions 2024. Aus Deutschland. Representing Germany. Francesco Friedrich, Thorsten Marges, Alexander Schiller und Felix Strauch.
Meine Damen, meine Herren, das waren die Wettkämpfe dieser Weltmeisterschaften. Aber heute um 19 Uhr machen wir das Ganze würdig zu Ende mit einer wunderschönen Siegerehrung auf dem Marktplatz in Winterberg mit diesen Herrschaften, aber auch noch mit den Teams aus Lettland, Österreich und Großbritannien. Ihr wart ein sensationelles Publikum. Wir sehen uns alle hoffentlich um 19 Uhr wieder. Vielen, vielen Dank und nochmal der Abschlussapplaus für die sensationellen deutschen Bob teams Wenn ihr wüsstet, wie das hier stinkt. <lacht> so, da gibt es noch ein paar Interviews. Und äh, in gebotener Lautstärke möglichst leise, weil wirklich noch Interviews geführt werden. Jürgen Bangert oben, wie war es für dich im Kreisel? Berühmte letzte Worte. War fantastisch. Wir haben es ja eben schon mal dem Publikum als Kompliment auf den Weg gegeben, die dann zur Winners Presentation runtergekommen sind. Es war das geilste Wochenende, was ich hier je erlebt habe im Kreisel. Kompliment an euch. Und äh, es war äh, Glückseligkeit pur. Es war das Fieber da. Wir haben mitgefiebert. Wir haben mit dir mitgefiebert, Willi. Ähm, es, war einfach nur, es war einfach nur grandios. Und die Nicole ist noch hier. Die hat heute ihren Geburtstag hier mit uns gefeiert. Guck mal, die sind auch noch im Kreisel. Und äh, schön, dass du da warst, dass ihr noch ein bisschen aushaltet hier. Also ein ganz, ganz großes Dankeschön, dass wir dabei sein durften. Und äh, ja, wir kommen gerne wieder. Ich hoffe, ihr auch. Also an dieser Stelle, Willi, mit dir war es auch wieder großartig geil. Es gibt nichts Schöneres. Vielen, vielen Dank nach oben in den Kreisen. Jürgen Banner, Toni Kaufmann waren da. Wir sagen Tschüss, Servus und 19 Uhr Marktplatz in Winterberg. Das gibt nur im Winterberg, mehr geht nicht. Also, wir fahren viel und so rein. Kommt alle gut und sicher nach Hause. Bis zum nächsten Mal.
Ganz richtig. Vorsicht bitte an der Bahn, es kommen noch zwei Taxibox. Also bitte keine Teams zum Abbauen rein oder sonst was. Es kommen jetzt noch zwei Taxibox. Ze wouden ze worden. Ja, maar ze wouden liever het liefst uh, dingen doen. Kijk eens in de kar, ik krijg ze niet. Ze wouden het bij mijn geboortsdag. Ja, dat is wel dat schön. Het is toch een stier. Toen we een foto maken met de jongens, ook goed maken. Maar dan stel ik maar daarin. Dan maar blijven, ik laat maar die Kom jongens. Ja, ik heb er nog eens maken. Oh, Ik heb ze alle vier. Ja, nee, dat zit wel Ja, joh. Ik, ik zet je even uit, hè? Oké. Okay. Zeg maar wanneer je kan. Zo, wat doe je dan, Go. Ja? Kan niet? Ja. Oké. Okay. Wow, Francesco Friedrich, uh, congratulations on another world title uh, in four runs. This was really a masterclass. Yeah, thank you. We we are so happy with, with the result. We did 130 in the first run, first run today, and yeah, the start record. We we did another race here, but we are really really happy with with this race. Yeah. 
Thorsten, uh, you had a really difficult start of the season, uh, especially also in the four men. But were you ever in doubt that you will be here at World Champions? Mm, not in doubt, but yeah, we had a, a rough start in Beijing, and and but then we we get uh, to the to the gold again in uh, I think in. Uh, Well, in La Plan, yeah, La Plan was our first goal again, and uh, I think at that point we thought, okay, we are we are back again, and uh, we were pretty confident with the situation. So, Felix, uh, how is it to become world champion in front of your home crowd? Yeah, it's, a, it's a great feeling with the best team of the world in France. I'm so happy about it. Yeah. yeah. So, Alexander. Um, Francesco, I, I, I can't count how many world titles he already has. He has Olympic gold medals for the team, of course. How is the feeling to, to uh, share the sled with the GOAT, the greatest of all time? It's every week a nice feeling to be here. It's, uh, it's the perfect championship for us these two weeks, and we are really happy. So, Francesco, um, correct me if I'm wrong. This is your seventh title in the four men's. You have eight. I don't know. You have, you don't know. The sixth one, or? I thought it was seven, but maybe it's six. You know better than. Be the sixth six. one. And then you have eight in the in the two men, and then you have four Olympic gold medals. Yeah. Exactly. Is there anything more to win? More medals. <laughs> Congratulations and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Show it on. Happy, happy. Schön, dass ihr auch noch die Frage beantwortet. Scheißegal. Das machen die Profis auch so.